In my second Lord of the Rings tutorial, I turn my attention to the forces of evil. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Witch King on a fearsome fell beast. And as usual, I will be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Before painting, we will be priming the miniature. I've used a black primer for this task, as this miniature features black as a predominant colour. You can use any black primer, but I've used Vallejo's black airbrush primer for this. I've also only partly assembled the miniature and have attached the Witch King to a length of wire. Keeping these components separate makes painting those tricky areas much easier. The first areas to paint are the lighter coloured flesh of the foul beast's underbelly and wings. For this, we will use Skaven Blight Dinge and we'll be using it in two different ways. First of all, to paint the wings, you'll want to water down your paint in order to make applying it over the black base coat much easier. So take your paint and mix it with an equal amount of water. Apply this mixture over the skin of the wings in several coats, allowing each layer to dry before applying the next. This steady buildup of layers will ensure a much better coverage of paint than if applying a single thick layer of paint straight out of the pot. Continuing with our Skaven Blight Dinge, we next want to paint the underbelly, but this time, instead of thinning with water, we will instead be using some Lamium Medium. Mix the two paints together in equal quantities, creating a mixture that is slightly translucent. With our mixture created, you can then apply it to the chest as well as the underside of the neck and tail. Once this first layer is dry, you will notice that some of the black is visible through it, creating a darker colour. Then you can apply a second layer, focusing on less of the size of the foul beast's body and covering a slightly smaller area than before. Once this layer is dried, you can then repeat, covering an even smaller area. Once completed, you will be left with a gradient of shading, moving from the black skin on the top side of the foul beast to the lighter skin underneath. To paint the foul beast scales and the spine's ridges, we'll be using a base coat of Eshen Grey. Remember to thin it with water and apply at least two thin down coats. Next, we will be painting the flesh inside of the Foul Beast mouth. For this, we will be using some Bugman's Glow. For the Foul Beast teeth, we will be picking them out very carefully with a thin brush and some Zandri dust to give them a slightly discoloured appearance. In order to paint the leather areas of the miniature, which include the straps and the reins, we will be using some Rhinox Hide. In this next step, we'll be painting both the Foul Beast and the Witch King's metal areas. To do this, we'll be using a base coat of Lead Belcher. Pay particular care when painting with metallics, as overspills tend to be a little more tricky to cover up later on. Once you finish with this step, thoroughly clean out your paint water and brushes to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes. Before we move on to the washes, we'll next be adding some lighter coloration to the wings and the underbelly. To do this, we'll be using a mixture of Storm Vermin Fur and Lamium Medium in much the same way that we painted the underbelly earlier. This time, however, we will want to apply that technique to the wings as well as the underbelly, creating a gradient which is darkest at the point where the wings connect to the black skin and lightest as it moves towards the wing's edge. For the underbelly, focus your application to only the underside of the chest and neck. Remember to build up this gradient over several layers so that you can really smooth out that colour transition. With all of our base coats completed, we can begin applying some washes and we'll be starting with Agrax Earthshade. Before you do this, however, I like to add a little Lamium Medium to reduce the wash's strength. Roughly two parts wash to one part medium works well. With the Agrax Earthshade thinned, we'll be applying it to the armour as well as the Foul Beast wings, mouth and underbelly. For these last few areas, it is particularly important to thin the wash as subtle variations in tone look much more natural on skin areas. The remaining scales and leather areas of the Foul Beast can then be washed using Nuln Oil which will help to not only add shading in the recesses, but to also darken down their colour slightly. With the washes completed, we can now start to work on our highlights. For the black skin of the Foul Beast, we'll be applying an edge highlight of Dark Reaper. In order to highlight, take a brush with a fine point and dip it into some slightly thinned paint. Then use this brush to paint on a thin line along the raised edges. This will help to create depth in the miniature and really help to bring out those details. The second highlight of the black skin will be Thunderhawk Blue in what I call an extreme highlight. Follow the same principle as before, but only apply this highlight to the more prominent edges such as corners and other sharp points. To highlight the edges of the Witch King's robes and the Falby's claws, we'll be using Mechanicus Standard Grey. 
The next paint to use is Dawnstone, and this will be used in two ways. First, to paint an extreme highlight onto the areas we painted in the last step, and secondly, as a regular highlight on the Foul Beast scales. You will find that the more muted hues of the Witch King's robes, as well as the Foul Beast claws and scales, will contrast nicely against the bluish hue of the skin's highlights. In order to highlight the edges of the leather areas, we'll be using Doombal Brown to create a slightly reddish colour to the leather. To highlight the fleshy insides of the Fel Beast mouth, we'll be using Cadian Flesh Tone. Continuing with the mouth, you can then use some Ashabti Bone to pick out the points of the teeth. For the wings and underbelly, we'll be using Baneblade Brown to edge highlight. Focus this highlight along the veins and edges of the wings, and also along the ribs on the torso. The final highlight will be of Stormhost Silver to all of the metal areas on the miniature. If you're painting a regular Nazgul, then you can go ahead and skip this step. But if you're painting the Witch King with a flaming blade, you'll want to know how to paint those tongs of fire. Start off by painting the flames with a base coat of Iron Rack Skin. This will give us a light surface to apply our later washes to. Follow this base coat with a wash of Cassandora Yellow. You'll find that the wash will stain the flames, giving them a yellow coloration, whilst also adding some slight shading in those recesses. The next step is another wash, but this time of Fugan Orange. However, instead of covering the whole flame, this time focus only on the outer half of the flame, leaving the sections touching the center of the blade yellow. Once that last wash has dried, you can then bring in some blood letter to add a reddish hue to the top quarter of the flames. Finally, an edge highlight of Abaddon Black will create the effect of smoke forming on the very tips of the flames. And here we have the completed Witch King on Foul Beast. I finish things off by varnishing and assembling the components before creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paints and grass tufts. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video, such as my Everlasting Wet palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support me in making these videos. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. So the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.